Welcome everyone, thanks for tuning back in, and hello for those of you new to Figure It Outie. I'll be swapping out my base A4 trunk lid for this S-Line A4 trunk lid, and I'll be showing you every step of the way to help with your own swap project. This will be the first of about five changes I'm going to do to change the exterior of my base B7 closer to the stylings of an S4 B7. In future videos, you can look forward to the front S4 bumper with OE blackout package for the grille, genuine aluminum solid side view mirrors, door blades, I'll do the quad tip rear valence and a full quad exhaust. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, this is a great time to do it and you can follow along with the transformation and I'd really appreciate it. I picked up this entire trunk lid and it's got a full liner on the inside and half a bonus set of smoke taillights I suppose, plus the two shock absorbers and brackets for $100 Canadian dollars on Kijiji, but most importantly it's Ibis White. I'm pretty particular when it comes to the condition of my car and parts, and sadly this trunk lid is in a little worse condition than mine is right now. You can see sort of the surface cracking or scratching, I'm not too sure what it is. Hopefully that can power buff out, and there will come a time where I have to do some paint work, so hopefully I can address this in the future. But for now, I'm committed to the style change. As usual, I'm stopping into the trusty Bentley manual. And they have a lot of information on the trunk lid and components, but for now what's relevant is removing the warning triangle, that's the handle on the inside, and then the surrounding holder. That will allow you to remove the lining, and then that'll give us access to disconnect the electrical harness. So, the handle. That is the upper half, the glow-in-the-dark portion here of the handle. We need to pry this up and off because underneath it is a steel ball head that attaches the handle to the trunk release cable. You'll be fine using a screwdriver to pry that apart, but I'm going to take the opportunity to use my new Schwabin trim tool kit for removing and not marring trim pieces. That should have been pretty easy, and now just so it doesn't annoy me, I'm going to lift out the release. Last, there is a little plastic socket under the ball joint of this handle, and I'm just going to lift it gently out to the side. Now we can remove that Phillips screw and the one out under the other handle as well. And the last thing to do before the liner is to remove this plastic cover, which you can do just by pulling it off from the trunk latch. To remove the liner, you only need to pop out eight clips. You'll find four along the bottom and four along the top. The profile of the clips look like this, and as you can tell, you only need to pull straight up on them. That being said, I would use your hands and some other tools like these to put lots of support around the felt, because if you just pry away at one edge, you can tear through the felt. I recommend starting at the top, it's the easiest to get at, and it'll help you so you can stick your arm around the back once you get to the trickier ones, which are these two right here. With the liner removed, I can go ahead and take off pretty much everything else you can see. In fact, the only things I will be keeping are any of the stoppers. So given that the wiring harness is here and hacked, I need to remove the entire harness plus the rear tail lights, and I'm actually gonna be swapping out every other mechanical piece too. That's because my car key is not keyed to this tumbler in the lock. One annoying catch to this are these little plastic plugs. So they're not threaded, there are just stages to them where they can be pushed through the metal, and they're really not meant to be pulled back out. You can see as evidence on this harness here that was yanked out of the car, this is more or less what happens when you just pull it out. So being that I'm a picky guy, first I'm going to try to keep this as OEM and install as possible which means I'm going to try to retain the clips and I'm going to take a razor blade and try to slice off the wrapping that holds the harness to the clip. As far as removing connectors, it's just the ones you can see. There's one on each inside tail light, one down here on the latch. We have one electrical one right here and then one right here. The wiring harness was just pulled out and I was able to retain all the plastic clips. Cutting them off with the razor blade was definitely an annoying job, but very doable. Now before I can move on and remove the hardware from the inside of the trunk lid, I have a bit of a dumb problem I need to deal with. It's that screw right there. Because coming up, we'll be taking this under light piece, it's all one piece, and it'll drop straight down. Actually, here's a better perspective where it normally is. And usually it would drop down and clear the front of this plate holder, no problem. However, someone put a screw that isn't supposed to be here in this uh, swapped plate holder and it's stripped out the backing that it sits in and I can't get it out. So I'm gonna to have to dremel this off and then I can remove all the other parts later. Just in case something similar happens to you, just know that these two torque screws aren't the only thing that actually attach this license plate holder to the car. 
behind each of these metal inserts right here, there is adhesive and more metal banding that runs horizontally across the space. You can just pull this off the back of the car. And that's what I'm gonna do actually. I'm gonna take my good one and put it on my swapped lid. Done and dusted. Also, always remember your PPE. Now all the interior hardware can be removed. So if your trunk lid that you just bought comes with taillights that you like, you don't need to do anything. These are smoked and I don't want them. So I'll be removing one 10 millimeter nut on each side. It doesn't actually come out. It just spins in place with this black retaining clip, which is kind of cool. So I'll pop those out. Otherwise it is one, two, three, and then four, five, six, seven, 10 millimeter nuts that have to come out. And then last there are two T20 torque screws on the top right here. Now that all the other parts are out, I'm gonna hit the back of the license plate holder here with a hair dryer and warm up the glue and slowly peel this off. With a little bit of heat and some gentle prying, the plate came off really easily. You can see now from the factory, there are three major strips of double-sided tape that are put into these grooves to hold the plate holder to the back of the trunk lid. In case you were wondering, why don't I just compress each of the four clips in the corners and push them out the back of the plate to remove the, the plastic plating? Well, they're all part of the same strip of double-sided tape, so that doesn't work. After removing the plate holder, I gave the trunk lid a good hand washing inside and out, and it turns out that this lid, although I knew it wasn't perfect before, is definitely a case of the good from afar, but far from good. So I'm gonna proceed with working on stripping out the rest of the current trunk interior at the moment, and I'm gonna think about how to do some paint correction in the future. For now, same song and dance as before. We'll do the handle, two screws, latch cover, and the liner. Onwards to loosening up the wiring harness. It's gonna suck a little bit more this time because I can't manipulate the trunk lid on my bench, but I'll disconnect everything and then pull it out of the bottom grommet and just let it hang into the trunk. The wiring harness is out. Just be careful, go slow. When you're pulling it through the cavity, especially right here, I had two of the plugs kind of jam up on me. So if you feel some tension, just back it up and be careful. Now I'm going to disconnect just the top of both shock absorbers. It's an easy task. There is a little notch that's both above and below the retaining clip, and you can just shove a screwdriver in there, although I like to use my pick, and you can just slide it in and then pull inwards towards the inside of the trunk. This is a good time to put on your safety glasses because when these clips come off the shock absorbers, they can really fly anywhere. With the shocks hanging down out of the way, we have access to both the nuts we need to work on. So the bottom one's gonna get removed entirely and the top one just has to get loosened. But these are 13 millimeter nuts and once we're happy with the fitment later, we can torque them back down onto the new lid at 15 foot pounds. But right now the name of the game is just being really careful. When this thing comes loose, it is not light and there are sharp edges around glass and paint. So go grab whoever you're isolating with. I'm about to run inside and grab my wife for a second. And just be really careful as you remove this. You can lift it up and take it off the back of the car. The old trunk lid is off and I just temporarily dropped the new one on. I think it looks awesome just at a first glance. I know it might seem kind of ridiculous to some people to just do this all for this integrated lip right there, but I think it looks really good. I think this car needs it, in fact. I've always said that the B7s suffer from rounditis and they need some more sharp edges. By the way, the part number between the S-Line and the S4 trunk lid is identical, so whatever you get your hands on is fine. Now that the trunk lid is on, the scratches are still bugging me, but you can see the difference between my probably fresher paint and this well-worn paint a little bit more. So before I go ahead and install any of the other stuff into the new trunk lid, I'm gonna take this in for some paint correction. Fast forward a few days, and I just picked up the lid from the detailer. This thing got a lot of love to turn into the condition that you're seeing now, and I hope you can tell through the camera how clean and bright white it is. I think we can actually call it Ibis White now. Before it was sort of this dull, creamy white color. I would have been embarrassed driving around with that on the back of my car, but this looks really good. So what happened was this thing received a wet sand on some of the, the harder scratched areas and then received a full three-stage polishing and sealant. I think you can really tell that it's much, much better. All the deep scratching here is gone. There's one little kind of chippy dent that you just can't do anything about. Same thing on the top that I didn't mention before that's still there. But ultimately, this thing is crispy and clean. It looks great. So shout out to Pam at Pinups Detailing here in Edmonton, Alberta. If you happen to be in Edmonton watching this, go check her out. Otherwise, go make friends with a detailer. They can do wonders for you. 
From here on out, we're just doing final assembly. So I'm just going to strip out the interior lights and all the hardware and transfer it onto my lid. And now it's back on. So each nut went in at the 15 foot pounds, shock absorbers on both sides. And then I moved on to fishing up the wiring harness back into the lid. I was met with a bit of a challenge right away because I found out there is a channel right about here. That's sort of your safe passage to getting the wiring harness back in. It's kind of hard to fish around and get it through this area on the side. So what I ended up doing was taking a piece of string, put something heavy on the end of it and fed it in by the tail light there till I found it at the bottom, grabbed that, tied the wiring harness to it, pulled it up and then I gently kind of fished it back through. My second hang up was that my originally well-intentioned idea of reusing the factory wiring routing clips is just not practical. These are specifically made to have wiring taped to them. And at the point where the clips are still in the car and you want to reuse them, it's really difficult to reach into all the places and apply the tape. It's easy to take tape off, but it's almost impossible to wrap it back in. So if you want to be anal and reuse tabs in the same system, Maybe you should smash these out, buy new ones, and then feed the wiring harness back through, apply the tabs while the wiring harness is loose, pop them back in, and then you're done. Since I'm not going to do that, and it's probably overkill anyways, and hey, what if I aspire to have a carbon fiber trunk one day and I don't want to redo all this again? I'm just using reusable zip ties. I really like these things for a lot of different projects, and for me what's important is just to take the slack out of the wiring harness and keep it away from sharp edges, which I've done. I'll just finish up the interior liner now and the handle and we'll move on to the final gapping. Just about complete, things are looking good. Obviously make sure everything works, especially this interior emergency release, that's super important. And then your trunk latch should be making a really nice solid connection, doesn't bounce and disengage. And of course it should release nicely as well. The very last thing to check is your gapping. The Bentley Publishing Manual calls out two gapping dimensions that are kind of important. One is where the trunk lid meets the chrome strip above the bumper, that's four, give or take half a millimeter. And then right where the trunk lid meets sort of the quarter panel, that's two, give or take half a millimeters. For me, what I really care about is if the lights look correct. And if you look really closely, I think I'm just a touch low on the inside. To adjust that spacing, you need to use these two stoppers. Making lid adjustments for the gapping is super simple, but it's easier to see on this old trunk lid here because the liners were removed. And that's because you don't want to be fooled by the fact that there is a Phillips head on the end of the stopper right here, because turning it doesn't do anything at all. What does do something is the fact that the body of the rubber stopper is threaded and you actually have to rotate it down here. So a clockwise turn will move it closer to the lid and therefore the lid will fall further down towards the bumper and counterclockwise moves the gapper out and will push the lid higher up. I think that in theory, Audi wants you to depress the pin with your screwdriver, give it a quarter turn to lock it into place. And then once it's engaged with the body of the stopper, use your screwdriver one way or another to make the adjustments. But in reality, I found that the plastic is way too soft and it's simply not engaged with the body enough to actually do that. So I did depress it. I would turn the screwdriver, but at the same time, I would grab it with my hand as much as I could around the liner and turn everything at the same time to try to get some momentum. You only get about a couple clicks at a time, but slowly, painfully, it does work. That's it. Adjustments were made on the stoppers. Obligatory gross mat in the trunk is back in. All the gaps are looking just how I want them. It's done. All in all, this project was super simple and very affordable. I'm all in this for $180, and I know you could do it for cheaper, and that's a far cry from what you would spend on a different trunk that you had to paint, or carbon fiber to lip, or pretty much any other option you're going to do. This looks really good. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative and helped you on your own project. Now, enjoy these grungy garage beauty shots as you think about subscribing.